Hello. <coughs> um, all right, so <coughs> I think we'll get started. All right, you can see that I have this new slide uh, already, which is already uploaded to Canvas, right? Uh, it'll be the part two for our uh, graph algorithms that we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so I uh, hear the title, the subtitle is uh, Advanced Algorithms, <clears throat> but uh, technically I don't think uh, it is a significant you know, step over the previous chapter. It's not like there's a difference in levels, but uh, I think the, the, the primary, the main difference from the previous one is that <clears throat> Um, so far, we have in the elementary, in the so-called elementary uh, algorithms, we um, start from uh, searching algorithms uh, like BFS and DFS, right? <clears throat> and then we uh, introduced two, uh, actually two examples um, of applying DFS uh, to the topological source. Um, and uh, strongly connected components uh, problems. Okay, so um, the major focus of these type of um, searching based algorithms uh, is actually on the vertices of the graph, right? So take DFS uh, as an example, in the a, in a, in a advanced version of DFS, we uh, will uh, record the uh, discovery time and the finishing time for each vertex. So it is those information associated, the information about each vertex that we are really interested in for these type of algorithms. All right. So, but you know, it, when we talk about a graph, the vertex information and the, the edge information are equally important, especially when you, uh, <clears throat> when we are considering edges that uh, carry meanings. It's not just about connectivity, but also that the uh, edges that have weights associated. And these weights can be uh, uh, numbers that mean something. That means it could be the distance, it could be the, the cost, it could be some, sort of, some, some type of measurements uh, between those vertices, right? So the focus, of this so-called chapter of advanced algorithms uh, is primarily about how we uh, are digging into the information about the edges in the graph, okay? Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I think it's still kind of uh, related to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the searching algorithms, to the searching algorithms like BFS, DFS, right? It's not like, uh, totally separated. And uh, there, there will be some uh, paradigms that are shared from the uh, previous chapter, okay? So, for example, um, we will uh, first talk about the, um, the spanning tree, the minimal spanning tree problem today, uh, because it's a, it's a tree, it's, it's a tree that we want to construct from a graph. So it's more or less related to uh, the BFS and DFS because you know we, we will have BFS and DFS trees uh, from, from these searching algorithms, right? But uh, today we will introduce a, a, some additional information about the edges, about the edge, not just about the vertices. Okay, so yeah. So the outline of this uh, now big <clears throat> topic of advanced algorithms, it's uh, basically two types of problems. The first one is the minimal spanning trees, okay? Uh, but under this topic, we will cover uh, basically uh, several types of algorithms, actually two specific, type, two specific types of algorithms for minimal spanning trees. And for the single source shortest path, uh, it is also a general problem, and we're gonna introduce uh, at least two types of uh, specific algorithms. Okay, 
And these types, these two uh, types of problems they share, one thing that they share is that they care about, they, they, they need about the, they need the information uh, about the weight of the weights of the edges. Okay. So in order to um, introduce this minimum spanning tree problem, we, I think we will start with a, uh, a, a practical problem about circuit uh, wiring. Okay. So if you have some, any experience uh, about how circuits are designed, electronic circuits are designed. So it's actually a PCB board, right? And there are some metal pins that we need to uh, choose or we need to design whether we want to wire those pins together uh, depending depending on the <clears throat> uh, the function we want to achieve right we want to uh, for example shortcut some beams by connecting them together or we need to make sure that some type some pairs of pins are never uh, connected to each other right but uh, it's basically uh, a problem of uh, choosing the pins uh, to be wired together, right? So if the problem, so we actually did a little bit, do a little bit uh, simplification here. So we will focus on the question of um, if we want to uh, um, interconnect uh, N pins, or if we have N pins and we want to connect all of these pins so that they will be, they will be at the same uh, electric potential level, right? They have the same voltage basically. And we can use uh, N minus one wires, okay? And each wire will connect two pins, right? So, and what we gonna, because it's a practical problem. So there, there are of course more than one solutions to this problem. Right. We can like make different arrangements, right? And what we want to achieve is that among all these uh, arrangements, we want to choose the one that uh, uses the least amount of wire because a wire doesn't come free. It's uh, um, uh, essentially uh, metals, right? We want to save that uh, uh, amount of the materials used. So for example, and this uh, um, leftmost example here, uh, you can think of these circles. Okay, so these circles are the pins. Okay, and those lines that connect those circles are the wires. Okay, so of course this is uh, our first solution, right? But uh, um, it is not uh, the ideal one, right? Because we you know, some of the, a lot of those wires are unnecessary, okay? Because once we have like, let me use a different color. Right. So we have already connected the, the central circle, the central pin here to the surrounding pins. So actually those force wires are not like uh, all necessary, right? One, oh, uh, like as long as we have one connection, one uh, uh, wire connected, the other three are not necessary. Okay, so that means we can use um, less amount of wire to achieve the same goal, like the one in the middle. The middle solution here is uh, a better one, right? Because it uh, saves a uh, significant amount of wires. Like it removes those like those oops, unnecessary, uh, unnecessary wires, right? There's no connections here, okay? And if we look at the length of those wires, actually we can do better, right? Like the one on the right, because it's replaced this longer wires, the longer wire here, right? With this shorter one. And this longer one is replaced with this one. Okay. So all these changes is guided by the by the goal of that we want to uh, use uh, 
as few as less uh, amounts uh, of wire as possible. So if we speak this problem, if we define this problem with the uh, language of a graph data structure, then we basically want to uh, uh, find a way to uh, find a subset of edges that connect all the vertices in the graph, right? And the constraint we place is that we want the summation of the weights of all the edges to be as small as possible, right? So, yeah, so I think it's uh, 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 very easy to define uh, in terms of the uh, graph term, in terms of the graph uh, language of graph uh, data structure, okay? All right, so like we put the, all the notations here, we have some, uh, um, connected and it's an undirected graph. So the property that the graph is connected is important. Okay, so uh, we, 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 it is our assumption, right? We, we want everything, we want all the vertices to be connected, uh, which means they, if we pick any, uh, no, any, any vertices, they are uh, reachable from each other, okay? And uh, it also makes sense to use undirected graph, right? Because uh, for this circuits wiring problem, for this particular problem, the electricity goes both ways, right? We cannot uh, like restrict that it go only goes from one pin to the other, but not from the other to itself, right? So uh, it makes sense to use a connected and undirected graph to, to define such a problem. Okay, so, and the V is a set of pins, right? And E is a set of connected connections or wire between the pairs of pins, okay? So now we are talking about the length of the wire. So we will need to use some function. Um, so let, let's review a little bit about some basic graph notations in the first day of the graph algorithms. We defined, we introduced the, the weight uh, function, okay, right? W, which is defined on the edge uh, from U to V, okay? U and V are two vertices in the graph. So this function will return the cost, will return a, some, some number, which is the weights of that edge. And in this particular example, the weight means the, the length of the wire to, uh, connect to uh, vertices or pins, okay? And ultimately the goal is to uh, find a subset, okay? And uh, sub this subset uh, uh, notated, denoted by this capital letter T, right? Which is a uh, subsets of edges, okay? And this subset connects all the vertices. Okay, and the total weight of the of these subsets is actually minimized. So this is our goal. Okay, and one in, one um, property of this subset is that it is acyclic. Okay, which means um, it is there's no cycles formed. Okay, so this is a uh, interesting constraints that, and also makes sense because if you look at this uh, graph on the right, right, if you look at this, if we like connect, uh, for example, uh, these, I uh, hope you can uh, see this, I'm using this blue uh, color to connect these two uh, vertices. So if we have this edge in the final uh, subsets of edges, um, it's not gonna change the property of this graph in terms of connectivity, right? Everything is still connected, but it's a redundant edge because now, even if without this edge, we can go from this vertex to the vertex in the center, right? Right, following by this uh, path. So this very bold, this uh, new, edge is actually not um, necessary. And it's actually formed as a, forms a, a 
cycle in the in the in the readout. So a cycle, well, once a cycle uh, appears in a subset, then this uh, whole subset is no longer a tree actually. Okay, because when we talk about a tree, we have the root node, right? And uh, from the root nodes, we will branch down to all the internal nodes and then to the leaf nodes, okay? So any cycles in the subset will break the tree property, okay? And that is not what we want because it's uh, redundancy, right? It's not uh, improving the problem uh, at all, okay? So that is some basic uh, uh, definitions of what we want to achieve in the so-called uh, minimum spanning trees problem. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this uh, uh, specific example. And I think uh, this example is something that we're gonna go through uh, many times in this uh, lecture. Okay, so here uh, we use the uh, letters, lowercase letters to uh, denote all the vertices in the graph. And this time the numbers appears uh, beside, uh, besides the edges. Okay, so the, the numbers no longer are no longer the vertices, but the weights of each edge. Okay, so the in this case, uh, if you look at the, the the shaded edges, the ones that are with this shallow background, with this shade bad background, and these edges, it said one example. Uh, of a of an acyclic uh, subset, and it's also a, a tree structure. Okay, and uh, it connects all vertices. Okay, so it is an example of the uh, minimum spanning tree. Uh, but so we because since we haven't uh, examined whether the total uh, uh, summation of the weights are are the minimum value, so. Uh, we need to do that in order to claim that this is a minimal spanning tree. But now we know that it is a spanning tree because uh, all the vertices can be uh, reachable from each other along by the by the by all the tree edges in the in the shaded color. Okay, so we call it a spanning tree because you know, as the name indicates, we can span the the the, the tree actually spans across the whole graph. Okay. And so that's how basically how the minimum spanning tree is um, defined and how the problem is defined, okay? So here's a note that um, the term minimum uh, actually refers to the fact that we want to minimize the weight, okay? So it is not, it is not exact, it's not minimizing the, the, the number of edges, but rather it is the weight of the edges. So these are two different types of problems, okay? So I have this note here uh, because the, the, the property about the edge, okay? is actually uh, another interesting property, right? So actually, if you want to have some spanning tree, okay? It's, it's not a minimum, right? We, we don't care about whether it's minimal or not. But if we want to find a spanning tree that uh, connects all the vertices in the whole graph, then the spanning tree must have exactly V minus one edges, okay? So this is a, a constraint for sure, right? If, if we have less than, or fewer, we use fewer than uh, V minus one edges, then we're gonna lose uh, connection to some vertices in the graph. Okay, so that's uh, that's the minimum uh, requirement we need to satisfy if we want to connect uh, all the um, all the uh, vertices in the graph. And if we have more than that edges, okay, then it'll be a problem, it'll, it'll be the same problem that we showed in the previous slide, right? We're gonna have some circles. We're gonna break the tree properties, okay? So uh, this can be uh, basically proved uh, uh, using the uh, properties of a, of, a, of, a, of a undirected graph. 
if you are interested, you can go to this place on the textbook to, to read about the uh, complete proof of it, right? All right, so let's carry on about the minimal spanning tree. So as I said, we, in order to make sure that the spanning tree is a minimal spanning tree, we will uh, calculate the total summation of all the weights. And in this case, we just uh, sum up all the weights in the tree, then it turns out to be uh, 37. Okay, and there's an interesting, uh, another interesting property we should uh, 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 keep in mind is that the minimum spanning tree here that we have highlighted is actually not a unique one, right? So because because there's some duplicates values in the tree in the edge in the in the edge weights, right? Say if you remove the edge BC which has the weight eight, right? If you remove this and just replace it with this edge from A to H because it has the same weight, which is eight, right? We actually can have something uh, that have the same total uh, weights, right? But also it connects all the uh, vertices. So it's, it's still a, a minimum spanning tree, right? So the minimum spanning tree problem is not a, uh, does not have a unique solution. Sometimes depending on the graph, depending on the input, right? So uh, usually we will say find uh, the, we will not so we will not say find the minimum spanning tree, but it's just uh, one of the minimum spanning trees of a graph that we are uh, actually looking for. All right. Um, yeah, so that's um, some, background about the problem itself. Mm, so in terms of solutions, uh, we will uh, talk about, we can lay out the solutions ba basically by first looking at uh, some generic method, okay? So this generic method, it uh, provides some sort of prototype solution to the problem of, uh, of how to how to find the minimum spanning tree or how, how to grow uh, a minimum spanning tree uh, um, as a general solution, okay? But it's not uh, uh, implement. It's just like a, an interface. It's like some um, abstract class, for example, abstract uh, solution. But uh, it's it's the basis for some for two specific algorithms we're gonna cover. The first one is called Crossco, and the second is called the uh, Prince. Okay, so they use um, different uh, uh, strategies and the different uh, data structure and uh, ways to implement uh, to to implement this generic method for finding a, a minimal spanner tree. Okay, so the generic method is more basically at a higher level description of the of the algorithm of the idea. So we will start from this uh, generic method first. Okay, so um, as you can see, I put the generic algorithm here. It's quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a quite simple form, right? So it's called the procedure is called generic MST and it takes the graph uh, as inputs, right? And uh, also together with some uh, weight function, right? So this is basically a standard uh, arguments, right? We need a graph, we need the weights. And uh, what, it's, what it's doing is that it's growing some uh, set of edges. So this set A, starts with some empty sets, right? It's, it's an empty at the beginning, right? It's to use a while loop uh, to carry out some steps to grow the empty sets, to grow the set A, okay? And after the while loop terminates, it will return the, it will return uh, the, the set. Okay, as as some uh, minimal spanning tree. Okay, so you, you see, uh, lying at the core of the algorithm is the the while loop. Okay, and what's uh, exactly is done in this 
while loop is that it will try to find some edge from u to v, okay? And here, the underlined word called is safe, right? We, in the, the, the standard, the, the threshold or the standards that this algorithm needs to follow is to find some safe edge, right? Which is safe for the set A, okay? And if that edge is safe, then it will be added to A, right? So actually it's a, it's a you know, very straightforward algorithm because it's a, trying to grow the tree or grow the sets one by adding one edge at a time, right? And it needs to make sure that that edge is safe for the set A at that, at that stage, okay? Right, so it basically manages a, um, a set of a, a, a set of edge, which is called a, right? And uh, here we will look at the uh, so-called loop invariance. Well, yeah, it's, it's just a, a property about, about the algorithm itself, okay? So it's basically that, you know, before each iteration, um, the A is a subset of some minimal spanning tree, okay? It is not, it is not necessary the, the minimal spanning tree uh, yet, right? But we know that it is a, some subset. And after each, at each step, we need to find an edge to add to A without violating that invariant, okay? We need to carefully, so we need to carefully choose the edge so that the A will remain the subset of some minimal spanning tree. Okay, so after the, the edge from U to V is added to A by this union operation, it remains some subset of MST. And eventually, uh, it, the, the whole set will be returned as the minimum spanning tree, right? So this term at, at the core of this algorithm is the idea of finding some safe edge, okay? So here, the safe edge, the concept safe edge is really uh, the most important uh, idea here. All right, so let's um, take a step further to try to uh, define, uh, let's say, what is a safe edge, right? If we want to um, make sure that the set A that we are growing will always remain uh, the subsets of some minimal spanning tree, okay? So we need to do, make some operational definition on this safe, uh, what is this so-called safe edge, okay? And that is actually the, the, the tricky part, okay? All right, let's uh, um, further uh, make some rule, make some further rules to, to recognize the so-called safe edges, okay? We will, define a, a bunch of uh, operations, define a bunch of uh, ideas and, and, and concepts, okay? So first of all, let's define the, the, the action the, of cuts or the operation of cuts, okay? So uh, what is a cut on the graph, okay? So it's basically, it is a partition, okay? So it's basically, parti uh, it's a partition of the undirected graph, right? On, on, the, on, the, on the undirect graph, and it will cut the graph into two half, which is indicated by these two sets, which is the set S and the remaining part, which is V minus S, okay? So this cut is basically defined on top of the vertices. So the first part of vertice S is one, the one half, and the remaining part is the other half. And the cuts basically do that, will separate these two parts. Okay, we'll separate the two parts of vertices. So for example, in this case, um, uh, we highlighted <coughs> the vertices into uh, two different colors, which is the, the white vertices and the black vertices, right? And the vertices from A, B, D, and E, they belong to one partition and the other five vertices are the other partition. Okay, so if you look at the, you know, the, the, the line here, 
that separates uh, all the vertices here, it's actually a cut of the graph, okay? And uh, it results in two subsets of vertices, which is uh, the capital S and the capital V minus capital S, okay? All right, so we have a cut, right? So one thing you can notice that if you look at the cuts, then you can see also there's some um, uh, edges, right? The edge A and H from B to H, and from B to C and C to D, and D to F and F to E. So all these edges, they actually cross the cuts, okay? So this is something we're gonna uh, soon define in the next slide, okay? So these edges, that we just uh, show in the previous slide actually crosses the two crosses the cut, okay? Because one end of those edges is connects to the to the white vertices, while the other end connects to the to the black ones. So they actually connect these two uh, partitions. So uh, that's why we call that these edges uh, actually cross the cuts, okay? And with this idea of crossing, then we can define the, uh, the other idea of respect, okay? So um, the respect uh, actually, the idea of respect actually needs to uh, be considered with the subsets A that we are uh, growing, okay? So we need to keep in mind that uh, the, 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 the ultimate goal of the uh, generic MST uh, um, algorithm is that we want to grow some um, subsets of the uh, minimal spanning tree. And uh, this subset is a subset of edges, okay? So let's assume that at the current stage, our uh, subset A already contains uh, five edges which are in this shaded uh, color, right? From A to B, uh, I to C, and so on, right? It contains all these five edges, okay? So these shaded edges are the so-called subset A, right? And so we say that the cut, which is the curve, right? Which is this curve, respects this set of A. If there's no edge, in this subset A crosses the cut, right? And it is indeed true in this case, because if you look at all the five edges, which is A, B, I, C, C, F, G, F, and H, G, actually none of them crosses the cut, right? So that's a uh, crosses the cut. So we, we will say that the cut actually pays some respect to the set A because it's, does not uh, separate the set A, okay? So that is some, just some, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, in, in intuitive uh, definition of the, or explanations of the operations of the concepts, okay? So um, having, now we have the cut defined, the cross, right? The idea of cross defined and the idea of respect defined. Let's uh, further look at the last concepts that we want to define, the light edge, okay? So, and light edge, as the name indicates, it must not be heavy, okay? So it is a very light edge. And in this particular case, we say an edge is a light edge. Uh, it must cross the cuts, okay? And it is, its weight is the minimum of any edge crossing the cut. It is among those, all the edges that cross the cuts, but it has the minimal weight, okay? So that's where the name light is from. So in the same example here, if we look at the edges that cross the cuts, right? Right, from AH, BH, BC, CD, DF, and DE, then if we compare the weight of it, we will find that CD has the minimal number. It has the minimal weight. So it is the unique light edge that cross the cut, right? So that is the so-called light edge, okay? And, you know, actually the idea of light edge actually uh, is uh, broader than this, uh, uh, than this case. 
is broader than um, uh, all the edges that cross the cut. It, so basically you can say that uh, given any condition, more generally speaking, uh, an edge can be a light edge. It can satisfy any uh, other properties if the weight is a minimum among all the edges that satisfy the property, okay? So in this case, the, uh, the property that we want to satisfy is that the, the edge needs to cross the cut, okay? So in this case, the light edge means that the, the minimal weight edge that cross the cut. Okay, so of course there can be more than one light a uh, light edge. Okay, and we can uh, deal with those. We can just uh, deal with those multiple uh, light edge uh, with some uh, strategies. Like we can just uh, uh, either randomly pick one, or we can uh, decide the order by some other rules. Right. All right, so that is the light edge. I think these are all very straightforward definitions, right? So having all these concepts defined, we have cut, we have uh, cross and respect and the light edge, right? With these four ideas, uh, concept defined, we can then go back to uh, the, uh, the generic method to define what is the so-called safe edge, okay? And the rule of finding a safe edge is given by this following theorem, which says that, okay, it's a pretty long, right? But uh, you will see that it's, you just uses the concepts that we use, uh, we have introduced so far, okay? So it says, given a graph uh, that is connected and undirected, and it has a, a weight function, and the subset A, um, um, right, the subset A that we are trying to grow is a subset uh, of some minimal spanning tree, right? And so let's the cuts, given some cuts, okay? Given some cuts that partition the graph into two parts. And these cuts that it must respect the uh, the subset A, okay? And let's the edge U and V be the light edge that crosses the cut. Then if we can find the light edge that cross the cut, and this cut also respects the, respect the uh, subset A, then this edge will be safe for A, okay? which means this, a, this edge will be selected to be added to the subset A, right? It is that clear, okay? So let, let, let's, let's look at, let's read this again maybe. So we are trying to grow some minimal spanning tree, right? And uh, we are at a stage of uh, having some subset A already, which is a subset for that minimal spanning tree. And then, as long as we can find a cut of the graph that don't, that doesn't cross the, that doesn't, uh, that's respect A, right? Which means that cut doesn't go through the subset A. And along that cut, we can find some edges that cross the cut, right? And among these cuts, we just find the light edge. And that light edge, will be the one that we need to put into the subject A. That, that is the one we need to put into, we need to grow, we need to use to grow A, okay? So I think that's a, that's a, that's an interesting uh, theorem. Um, so it's, it's, it's clearly defines uh, the strategy of how to, how to choose the, uh, how to incrementally choose uh, edges to put into A, okay? But still, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, um, you know, it's a still a, a, just a prototype, a prototype right? We, we don't have uh, clear uh, uh, ideas of how to, uh, uh, in our implementation, how to, how to define the, 
uh, the cut, how to uh, how to represent the, the subsets, right? How to uh, use some data structure to, to find the, the, the light edge, for example, okay? So, but all having these ideas available here, we are able to use different ways to implement specific algorithms, okay? And actually this theorem, uh, before we look into some detailed implementations, with this theorem as basis, we're gonna look at how do we uh, prove it. Okay, we're gonna go through this uh, pretty quickly. I think I think after we have read through read the, the the proof, we will have a better idea of why why this algorithm why this uh, generic method is is a is a correct one. I think that is that will be helpful for us to understand the, the specific uh, uh, implementations. Okay. So the, the proof um, um, actually uh, goes in this way, okay? It goes uh, from the opposite side. So it will start with letting the, the capital T to be some minimal spanning tree that includes A, right? That is our assumption because we assume that A uh, is a subset of A, some kind of minimal spanning tree, right? And we, uh, we need to assume that the minimum spanning tree does not contain the light edge, right? Because it is the one that we want to prove. So let's assume that uh, the, the minimum spanning tree does not contain the light edge, okay? Otherwise we are already there. We, we have already proved it, right? So we now should, uh, what we need to do is to construct another minimum spanning tree. Let's call it T prime that actually includes uh, the minimal spanning tree. That, that, that includes the, the light edge from U to V, okay? And by constructing such a minimal spanning tree T prime, then we actually prove that uh, uh, U and V is a safe edge for A, okay? So that's uh, something, we wanna, something we wanna do. So if we draw it with a with a with a uh, graph of using using the set theory, we can say that uh, the T is a larger set. It's a minimum spanning tree, and we need to uh, we already have A here, and A is a subset of um, subset of uh, edges. Okay, so now we want to sh uh, show that by including uh, um, the edge into A, it will, uh, uh, but we need to show that there are some uh, uh, different, uh, different type of uh, minimal spanning tree, another different, another minimum spanning tree that includes uh, T, uh, that we call the T, and actually T has, uh, uh, let me see. I draw it in a bad way. Let me erase it. So let's assume that the T looks like this way. It actually includes A and also includes the, uh, the light edge. So as long as we can show that T prime is also a minimum spanning tree, uh, which means the, the total weight of T is actually the same as total weight of T, then we are successful in our uh, proof. Okay, so let's let's go through that uh, quickly. Okay, All right. So uh, the first step is that because uh, we assume that uh, the the minimum spanning tree that contains the current set A does not contain a light edge, right? So because we have this assumption, then the light edge if we add that light edge uh, uh, to the tree, to T, then it will must form a circle, okay? With the edges on a simple path from, uh, uh, from P, uh, uh, from, from U to V in T, okay? So now this, um, uh, what I showed in this graph is actually T, okay? So 
the edge here, right? And the edge here, all the edges connected here, they form the minimal spanning tree T, okay? And you can see that some uh, uh, edges, some edges uh, are uh, in shaded color and these edges are the uh, subset A that we are growing currently, okay? So uh, the assumption says that because we assume the, the T does not contain UMV. So the here, the, 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 the edge is not there. It is a dashed line, okay? Then if we, if we put UMV uh, into the tree, then it must form a circle, right? Because we assume that it is a, the, the T is a, is a minimum spanning tree. And the property of a minimum spanning tree is that it has how many a V minus one edges. Right. If we put an additional edge into that minimum span tree, it must it will must form a circle. Okay. So since uh, now uh, let's going back to the the, the 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 problem we have. Since now U and V is some light edge, which means it must uh, the the two ends, the U and the V, they are at uh, the opposite sides of a cut, right? So at least one edge in the tree lies on the simple path and across uh, the cuts, right? So that is also something we can, uh, 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 we can get, we can infer from the assumption, okay? So let's uh, assume that the, edge x and y, okay? The edge x and y is the, such an edge that, that, shames the, that, that shapes the path from u to v, okay? So that's x, let's assume that x uh, from, the, the edge from x and y is such an edge, okay? And now since it is not in the, uh, uh, it is not in a, we, that is also something we know because we know that the cuts will, uh, respect, will respect A, okay? So now let's look at the new edge X and Y, okay? So if we remove it, it will actually break the, two, break the tree into two components, right? Because the whole thing is a tree. And if we remove that edge, it will break uh, the trees into two parts, okay? And let's do that by removing the edge from T uh, from the tree T and then use uh, and add the new edge here, U and V into the tree, right? So it's like given this uh, tree, we remove the edge X and Y and add in a new edge T, a U and V. So this will actually make a, a new tree, right? Which we call T prime. Okay, so, uh, let, so the next step is also clear, right? We, we just want to show that the tree prime is also a minimal spanning tree, right? right? As long as we can show that, then we can say that the UMV is safe to the current subset A, okay? So let's see if we can do that by removing X and Y, and we create and we add a new edge from U to V, and let's see if it's the uh, result. If the result is still a, a minimal spanning tree. Okay. All right. So, since let, now we need to utilize our uh, conditions because the edge from U to V is a light edge. That is a condition, right? And also we know that X and Y also crosses the cuts. Right, so if that is the case, U and V is the light edge and the X to Y also crosses the cut. So because, the, because of the definition of the light edge, it is, must be, it, is the, it is the one that has the minimal weight, right? So the weight of U to V should be smaller than the weight from X to Y, right? So that's easy to get that the weight, 
the total weights of T prime must be smaller, less than or equal to the weight of T, right? Because we are minusing something that is uh, that is greater, right? Than uh, than the new than the new edge, right? So uh, that's something we can get. The T prime should have a smaller, less than or equal to uh, total weight than uh, than uh, than uh, than the T than the tree T, right? Okay, so now it's an interesting part because we have assumed that T is already a spanning minimal spanning tree, which might, which means that we cannot we can never go smaller, right? Because T is already a small is a minimal spanning tree, so we must have that the minimal spanning tree should be smaller. The total weight of T should be small less than or equal to T prime. Okay, so what does that mean? these two inequalities with different directions, right? Which means that the only option is that T prime must also be a minimal spanning tree that has the same weight, right? That has the same weight as T, okay? Which means the U and V is safe for A, okay? All right, so that seems uh, magical, right? But uh, it's uh, just a, a, a tricky game that utilized uh, all the conditions we have, okay? So remember, our conditions is that, uh, first of all, we have some uh, A that includes all the shaded areas, right? And also the cut needs to respect A, okay? The cut must respect A here. And also the U and V, the one that we are testing is the light edge. So it must has it must has the minimum weight that cross the uh, for among all the edges that cross the cut. Okay, so we just to create some imaginary uh, edge from x to y, and then we remove that x to y, and then replaced by the smaller weights uh, cuts from u to v, which will create a, some new minimal spanning tree. Okay, so that u and v is safe. Okay, so having proved this. Uh, theorem, which means that we have some general solution, right, for the uh, minimal spanning tree problem. Okay, so we can follow this uh, generic principle of finding the uh, safe edge uh, to to be uh, to be added to the graph. We are able to implement some uh, kind of specific algorithms. Okay. All right. All right. So let's look at some uh, further uh, properties. So it is first of all, it is a incremental uh, uh, algorithm that it's uh, grow the subsets uh, from from nothing, right? From the empty sets. Okay. And the, during this process, the subsets A is always acyclic. Okay. It will never be a cycle. Uh, it will never be cycle. There, there, there will be never will be cycles in it because in a minimum spanning tree, there shouldn't be any cycle in it, okay? So at any point, the graph, if you look at the, the subgraph, which includes everything, every nodes, uh, uh, every vertices, but only a subset of edges. So this subgraph must be a forest, okay? It must be uh, some, some uh, graph, some subgraph and some uh, isolated vertices. Okay, so it's a typical uh, forest. Okay, so and and any safe edge u to, uh, from u to v for a uh, will connect some distinct components within that forest. Okay, and the while loop will execute uh, v minus one times. Okay, and this is uh, an important uh, property, right? You know why? Because we let's go back to the definition of uh, minimal spanning tree. The minimum spanning tree must have v minus one exactly mu uh, v minus one edges, right? It couldn't be one less or one more, right? Uh, in either case, it will break the, the tree property. Okay, right. So yeah, it's an incremental uh, algorithm. It will grow from zero or from nothing. And each time we reduce the number of uh, 
reduce the number of trees in that forest by one, okay? And uh, when the algorithm is done, the forest will become a, only one tree, and that tree is the minimum spanning tree that we need. All right, so now let's look at some specific algorithms. I think we can cover the uh, cross goals algorithm today, okay? And these two types of specific algorithms, cross goal, both cross goal and the prim, they all elaborate on the generic method, okay? But the difference is that uh, they use different ways to define the cuts, okay? And they each will use some specific rule to determine the safe edge. All right, so let's look at the Kraskos algorithm. Okay, so in Kraskos algorithm, the subset A is a forest. Okay, as we just analyzed, have just analyzed, and in particular, we are going back to where we are, we are using the the data structure disjoint set. Okay, so this is not first time that we. Uh, 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 came across this data uh, data structure, right? We we should, we, we revealed it last uh, Tuesday about when we talk about uh, strongly connected components. We show that actually this join set can be used to uh, find the connected components, right? So uh, it's used again here in the cross codes algorithm. So the safe edge here to be added to A is always the least weight edge that connects two distinct components, okay? So it's defined by the least weight edge that connects the two distinct components. And each component is a disjoint set, okay? So this is how, exact, how specifically the, this, uh, how, the, how, the, how the cross are defined, right? We just need to look at the least weights edge okay so if we look at the algorithm uh it looks like this way right it must be i think it can remind you of something that we have gone through yes uh on, on tuesday's class about the disjoint uh about the disjoint set data structure okay so first of all it's uh, a for loop that make each vertex a unique set okay it calls make sets on it right and then comes a line of code that sorts all the edges into non-decreasing, which is basically increasing order by their weights, okay? And then we use a second for loop that takes all the edges in a non-decreasing order, which is increasing order, right? And take any roots, uh, any edge, and we were gonna check whether the two ends of the edge belongs to the same set. If they don't, then we're gonna add that edge. We're gonna treat that edge as a safe edge and that edge will be added to A. And then the two sets will be union together, okay? So we have make sets, find sets and union sets. So that is basically exactly the same operation of the connects of the of the uh, connected components uh, algorithm right defined using defined by the this disjoint uh, defined with the disjoints uh, disjoint sets data structure okay so yeah I think it's a, a straightforward uh, um, uh, algorithm and I think uh, we can first uh, compare it with the uh, um, disjoint, uh, uh, we compare with, compare to with uh, connected components algorithm, okay? So, uh, let's look at uh, the disjoint sets. So I'm gonna skip this because it's the same contents of disjoint sets, right? We have reviewed the make sets, union and find sets, right? So let's look at the, uh, connected components algorithm again, and we can compare it with the uh, cross pose algorithm. You can see a lot of similarities here. The connected components algorithm also comes with two for loops, right? The first for loop go through all the vertices. The second for loop go through all the edges, right? So 
And the algorithm, this one, we use something we have already gone through. And yes, here, we're gonna compare it with Crasco's algorithm. So the, these parts, the, the, the blue parts, they are shared, right? It's basically, Crasco is the same as connected components, right? We will make each set an empty, uh, and, and uh, you make each vertex an empty set, right? And then the additional line here is to sort the, on the left is to sort edges in a decreasing order. And then the next part is also similar, right? In the next part is that we go through all the edges and for each edge, we will check whether the, or whether the two ends belong to the same sets. If not, we're gonna merge, we're gonna union these two sets, okay? The only difference is that the order that we examine all the edges in Crasco is that we need to take the non-decreasing order because we want the light edge, right? The light edge is the one that has the minimal weights, right? So that's why we will take additional step to sort at all the edges first and then take the order, examine all the edges in that, uh, in that careful manner, okay? And the difference is that um, um, the minimum spanning tree uh, Crossgo's algorithm will assume that the graph is connected, okay? So that means there's only one connected components, okay? But uh, the, the general connected components algorithm um, on the right, actually uh, it doesn't require that we only have one component, but it could be multiple components. Okay, so I think we can uh, go through the examples here quickly. Okay. So yeah, Crasco's algorithm on the, uh, on the undirected and the weighted uh, graph here with the numbers as the weights. Okay. And the subsets that we are growing will start with an empty one, right? And since all the vertices are initialized to trees, so we basically uh, will uh, like treat each uh, vertex uh, as a as a single uh, subset as a single set, right? So now we're talking about the the second for loop. Now the second for loop will go through uh, all the edges. In the in the non decreasing order, right? In basically, in increasing order. So we we will look at the the weight that has the minimal weight. We will have the, we look at the uh, edge with the minimal weights at first, right? So it's basically look at the edge from H to G, right? Because and we will examine whether the two ends G and H they belong to the same set or not. Okay, and it turns out G and H they are two different sets. So the edge will be added, okay? According to the algorithm, the edge will be added to the sets, to the subset A. And the G and H will also be union, right? According to the algorithm, right? At the beginning, they are two sets. So in the first iteration, they will be union, okay? And the next one that we're gonna uh, exam is the 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 next the next edge that has a little bit higher weight, right? It could be G A G F or it could be I C because they all have two, right? So here we will use some randomness to to select the uh, the next one to be exempt, okay? So for example, we consider uh, C and I, right? And since the two ends, two vertices I and C, they also belong to different uh, sets or due to different trees. So they will be, the, the edge will be added to the subsets A and the two vertices will also be a uh, union together. Okay, all right. So that's how we choose I and C. And the next one will be F and G, right? From F to G, uh, because it has the, the, a very small weight too, okay? And F to G will also be merged. Right, and the resulting forest or forest will also will be smaller and smaller. Right. All right. So we just follow this uh, principle, and we will soon go through all the edges in the tree. Oops. Okay. Next one is a uh, B, for example. Right. 
it will be added to the subsets and it will be merged. And the next one will be CNF, it will be added and results will be, uh, the two sets will be merged, okay? And next, okay, so this one is special. Next, we'll look at the add from I to G. It has a small weight six, right? But the code that we're gonna examine is that it finds that the two ends, I and G, they are already in the same sets, okay? They're already in the same sets. If you look at the uh, this input condition, right? This, the I, uh, no, the, the, the I and G, they are already in the same set. So we're gonna basically skip through this, not going to uh, add it to A, because if we add it, then we're gonna uh, form a loop, right? Form a, 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 not a loop, but a cycle, right? And a cycle is not what we need. Uh, it's, a, it's a problematic. Right, so we're gonna skip this uh, edge and then look at the next one. Okay, so it will be, for example, C to D. Right, C D will be added because it will uh, create, it will merge into a new, uh, a larger set. Okay, and the next one is also skipped because H and I they are already in the same set. All right, and the next one A H can be added. Right. And the last iteration, the B and C will not be, the B and C will not be considered because you know the two ends, they are already connected, right? The D to E is considered, it will be added. Okay, so lastly, the F to E and the B to H and uh, D to F will not be considered because uh, it will, uh, it will, um, um, break the, it will break the, 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 the acyclic property of the tree, okay? So at this point, we have gone through all the vertices all together uh, once, and then it uh, has constructed a minimum spanning tree for us, which is the, uh, which is the subset A that we are growing uh, within this process. And the result, you can see that the results now has contain only contain one uh, subset or one set, which is one tree, but not a forest. Okay. All right. So uh, it's an interesting process to go through this pro uh, to go through this algorithm because uh, uh, it clearly shows how um, we are selecting among a bunch of edges which are candidates for the safe edge. And then we choose the smallest one, right? But also it needs to satisfy that the two ends are at different sets because only by that we are finding the, the we are finding the, the edge that crosses the cut, right? Otherwise, otherwise if, if the two ends are in, already in the same, uh, already in the same sets, then we're not respect that subset A. Right, we, we want to respect the subset A, do not cross it. All right, so uh, that's so much for the uh, cross goals algorithm, right? Now, so let's uh, look at the running time for it, okay? So uh, it, it'll be interesting because we are using, not just to use two for loops, right? But also it depends on uh, implementation of the disjoint set data structure. Okay, and as we said before, this disjoint set can be usually be implemented with some linked lists. Okay, and the sorting algorithm is also something we need to take into consideration, right? So if we like use a quick sort or some uh, efficient uh, merge, uh, not merge sort, merge sort can be used, but uh, like a heap sort, for example, if we sort all the edges, then you basically take e times logarithm of e time. Okay. And if E is less than V, then we can rewrite this as logarithm of V, okay? And line five to eight, the second for loop, that's the uh, key we want to analyze. So basically it performs, uh, it goes through all the E edges, right? And in, within each iteration, it will carry out the find sets and the union operations, okay? So taking that all into consideration, it will take a total of like um, um, V plus E times alpha of V. And this alpha is related to the uh, detail about how this joint set data structure is implemented, okay? So with, uh, 
with some good implementation, this alpha of V, which is related to the make sets, uh, find sets, and the union, will only take a logarithm of V time. So if we take that into consideration, we can rewrite the uh, algorithm into this equation, which is basically big O of E times logarithm of V, okay? So this part comes with uh, the sort, right? And this part comes with the uh, two for loops, right? Within which there is a logarithm of V that is associated with the disjoint uh, set operations, okay? So, that's uh, pretty much we have uh, big O of E times logarithm times logarithm of V, um, because uh, because there's there's a logarithm V in there, so we are basically happy with it. Uh, it won't be that um, um, insanely slow algorithm, right? Because it's bounded by the logarithm function, not by the quadratic function. All right, and that is. Uh, the cross goes algorithm we're gonna talk about today. And the next time uh, we're gonna, uh, next Tuesday, we're gonna analyze the Prim's algorithm and it will be a totally, uh, not totally different, but it's the same, uh, it solved the same problem, but it uses a different the data structure and the different strategies to define the safe edge, define the uh, way how we handle the, uh, how we store the, the, the vertices into uh, how we store the edges and the vertices into the readout, into the subset A, okay? All right, uh, yeah, I think that's so much for it. I'm gonna stop the recording.